Hey guys, Yana here. So imagine a situation. You bought new watercolors, you're super excited to try them out, but you're not exactly sure how they're gonna behave on watercolor paper. And you really don't want to ruin your artwork just because you didn't know the behavior of the paint and the paint just acted out. So today in this video, I want to share with you my own system of testing watercolor paints. I'll demonstrate uh, everything I do, the way I swatch the paint, how it does the density, opacity, <laughs> the color vibrancy, um, and other technical parts of paint, which is very important to know before you start painting. And in this video, I'm testing 10 new colors from Rosa watercolor brand, and you will see exactly what I do. I have a special book where I keep track of all colors I've used. That's an organized system of testing pigments. I test the transparency and the opacity, pull each color down the paper sheet to see the brightness and density, also check how stainy the pigment is, and lately I've started adding some mixing combinations. I will talk about all of it in this video. I will talk about all of it in this video. I start with writing down the marketing name of the color and its pigment component. For example, this uh, warm grey paint from Rosa consists of three pigments. Pigment red 254, pigment black 7, pigment white 6. It is a pretty complicated paint and gives an interesting color on paper, so let's test its qualities. First, I covered my rectangle with a flat wash of warm grey um, to see its plain color. In the nearby rectangle, I created a gradated wash starting from the most concentrated load of paint and stretched it down to the lightest. This way I can see the density of the paint. At the same time, I'm painting over a black line to see whether the pigment can cover it. This tells me about its opacity features. A larger space I work with on the left just gives me more data. And also, I can test the stainy abilities of the pigment. Stainy pigments leave marks on paper after lifting, and in general, they're more complicated to remove. So, with the semi wet flat brush, I lifted the pigment right up while it, it was still wet to see how the pigment behaves. And you don't see it in the video, but I waited till the paint got completely dry and lifted it once more to see the difference. I do the same with the next color, black-green. It also consists of three pigments and, as you guessed, this black color has a little bit of green tone to it. While testing this black color next to other black colors of other brands, I can see how different this one is. Just like warm grey,
black green is semi-opaque. It is easy to lift, but it can't be removed completely from paper. It leaves a light stain anyway. The next paint I'm testing is a couple of yellows from Aurelin Group. It is generally a very intense color and you can keep diluting it for, well, quite a while. It reminds me of Cambodge, which is no surprise because both have the same pigment inside. Pigment Yellow 150. Another Aurelin has a tint of green in it, hence the name Aurelin Green. The look is pretty interesting. In my other video you can see me painting fruits using the paints I'm testing here today. Such a greeny yellow is a perfect color for what I did there. Both colors are not opaque at all and I could wipe them off the paper sheet clean without any problems. Next in line is Royal Brown. Nice, clean, light, transparent brown color reminded me of Burn Sienna.
You can achieve really intense colors with this paint as well as dilute it down to an almost invisible light tone. Color Color was an interesting discovery in this new collection. It has three pigments inside. It is better to use such complicated colors as they are, in their pure color without mixing with any other paints. Otherwise, you will get a pretty muddy result. Because of the white pigment in its content, the paint is pretty opaque. It noticeably covered a black line. White pigment also gives a mate tone to the color. I place coral into the section of reds in my book because the other two pigments inside are red. And so, I continue with my red section, adding another color, Mother Brown. Can be misleading because of the name, but pigment content is clear. Pigment red, 101. Pigment red, 264. And yet the color leans towards warm brown, just like royal brown I've tested earlier.
Another not red, red color in this collection is Caput Mortum. A promising name, grainy texture with granulation, quite difficult to gain density as well as stretch out the color. Cerulean is a must in any watercolor collection and Rosa is no exception. I love this color and the granulation as well, but can't say that this one is anyhow different than any other Cerulean from any other brand. Mint is definitely an unusual paint to play with. It contains two pigments, quite thick and made, due to white pigment in it. Also, it is not easy to gain density, the color is just pale. Not exactly the mint I would imagine, but can be used as a pure independent color to paint specific subjects.
That's all. I just need to put back my new members of watercolor family into my test book. It was a fun test, I love trying new colors. Brands are going above and beyond mixing unusual combinations to achieve unique tones. This makes it easier for artists who work with pure pigments and in single layers. Hope you enjoyed the video! Now you know how I test new watercolor paints. This is really the time when my nerdy self <laughs> takes over my regular chaotic self. <laughs> uh, but. If you have your own uh, system of testing paints, I would be very excited to learn about it. Please do share in the comments below and also I will be very grateful for your support. If you like and subscribe <laughs> to this channel and well, if you don't want to miss other videos about all artsy and creative stuff. <laughs>